He could go. 50. Intercepted. Caught. And a touchdown. To the 10. He will score. It's time for the Bumper to Bumper Award winning NFL prediction segment on the fan. Brought to you by Continental Diamond. Now, to help you break down this week's games, here's your favorite NFL wonk, Dan Barrero. Should have asked this uh, before the start of this segment. Are we doing a Gerby Lock of the Week this week? We are. For the Sunday night, get tickets for the Sunday night game? Against the Colts. Are that's you right. kidding me? How about that? Oh, my goodness. That's Hashtag a, Gerby Lock of the Week. That's a wonderful uh, incentive. You know, I was thinking about this. We were talking about, you know, famous people whose public image has changed from one extreme um, to the perhaps the other. There are some people in the public eye who are viewed through a jackassian lens at the start and even many years later are still viewed through that same jackassian lens. Hi, Carl. Carl? Uh, what, do you, what do you mean by that, Dan? I think that uh, at least around here, you're an example of a pop culture figure of some renown Thank you very much. I agree. I'm former Minnesota sports exactly uh, sports personality of the year, and I think according to to a defunct uh, <laughs> year, it's correct. It, it doesn't exist. Doesn't anymore. exist any longer. But once upon a time, it did. And I think it's fair to say that the in the public eye, your image has not really changed all that much over the decades. I think you were uh, kind of you don't think it's, you don't think that I've become like fine wine. I'm you know I've huh? mellowed with age, kind of rounded into shape. That's an interesting thought. I I'll I'll ask the listeners via the Bradshaw and Brian KFN text line six four six eight six. Has well, familiarity you know, there's a lot of degenerate to that? <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, does familiarity soften you know your feelings on Gerby, or does familiarity breed contempt? So I think it's the latter. If I'm being honest. Well, I think there's jealousy. There's, really there could I be mean, some of that. How many people are on, There's not a lot of owners out there. <laughs> no, that, you know, <laughs> they don't get to participate in their team's success. First of all, the team doesn't have very much success. That's uncalled And they don't for. get to participate in it. Yeah. So, you know, there's that. I got a great job with the Department of Transportation. You do? I work, I work for the government, which is pretty much, you know. Gravy. You, Almost, he almost has to do something insane to get fired. <laughs> Even then, he don't necessarily get fired. Uh, you know, there's that. Yeah. And, you know, I've had many successful business uh, operations, including my current one. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, the latest developments on PackerFanConnections.com. Yeah, boy, uh, oh, boy, Dan. I got to tell you. Yeah. First of all, we had the greatest karaoke event of all time. It was everything you hoped for uh, and more. Yeah, we've actually sent a couple of those uh, uh, videos. We videotaped everybody. Okay. Uh, as, by the way, if anybody just wants a copy of their videotape, just contact us. It's a small processing key. Okay. Uh, but we sent a bunch of them off to American Idol. So I think some of those people should be looking for, you know, a phone call. maybe from American Idol? Like that. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. There's some great singers. Yeah, great sure. singers. Yeah, I'm sure there are. The um, two gals who sang Define Gravity, oh, my goodness. They should be in the movie. They were that good, huh? Oh, yeah. Why are we starting at 4.02 rather than the usual 3.30? What was what was the problem? Uh, unfortunately, Dan, we're going through um, this time of year. Mm. We have a budgeting process at the Department of Transportation, and they have uh, grants. It's not something I can control. Because okay. even with a high-up job like mine, there's still a bunch of you know bureaucrats who tell me where to go and what time to be there. Interesting. So. Um, you'll like this text that just came in. This is a 612 area code, too, by the way. This is an out of Wisconsin area code. Gerb Schmidt is the best part of KFAN, better even than the initials game. What's that initials you game? You probably don't know much about that, do you? Uh, uh-huh. It's a, a highly popular uh, Power Trip morning show game, on you know, on-air game show that they've turned into, like, a, it has, like, cultish... Uh, success and popularity. I mean, it's it's just like, but to, so to be it even oh. compared with that, that entertaining and interesting. I wonder if, uh, if they would like to have me on sometime. I I bet you they would actually. I bet you they would. Um, on the other hand, Richie from Lake Elmo, also known as Seven O Two Guy, 
I can speak for everyone that Carl has blocked on X. He has been despised, is despised, and will continue to be despised. Hmm. Well, look, I only block people who are uh, on X who are um, disruptive. Let's just call them disruptive. That. They're disruptive. What does that even mean? They're those bad people that you know are abusing the privilege. Oh, all right. Well, don't you think you bring some of that on yourself, though, if you're honest? Um, Dan, are you aware that some of the stuff that you tweet out might incite, you know, kind of negative behavior? No, and I don't, I don't know who, what you're talking, not lately I haven't. Dan. I've, been a, I've been a font of positivity lately. Dan. You're not buying that, are you? You're Come kind of, on, Dan. You made a career out of it. What are you talking about? Well, I, uh, I don't think I'm in your class, actually. I think well, you make yeah, more. I don't either, but that's okay. I, I think you, there someday. you make more enemies than I do. To be honest. Well, you know, you can keep trying. Um. So tell me about. <laughs> honestly, uh, the, the 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 illustrations uh, via PackerFanConnections.com dot com are stunning. PackerFanConnections.com. dot com. Visit them now. We've got our next social event, which is almost all sold out. And that's what I want to talk to you about. You're calling it the first ever Sadie Hawkins paintball extravaganza. Extravaganza. We're yeah. going into the Wisconsin woods for some paintball fun. Women, hunt down your dream dude and have some beer. <laughs> sounds like a uh, sounds like a very positive experience. Uh, I, I'm yeah, sure we're going to offer the opportunity for first of all, we'll have a couple rounds of paintball. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you get your kind of aim going, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, there's like thirty guys. Yeah, we're almost all signed up there. So right. if you're a guy and you want in on that, you got to get in on pretty quick. Uh, so <laughs> the uh, and and we're going to give it all the, uh, the the ladies a different shade of paint in their paint. Paintball gun, yeah, and the, then they can go in the woods and shoot whoever they want. They appear it's kind of like hunting season. <laughs> That's kind of what we were thinking. We were thinking, well, what could possibly go wrong? Kind of screwed over during hunting season because the guys I, all go off and they drink beer and they pretend like they're shooting animals. I now in the in the illustrate the photos accompanying this page, the first ever yeah. Sadie Hawkins paintball extravaganza. It appears to me you have a photo of two scantily clad women, um, one in sort of it was warm that day, Dan. It was bikini very warm. briefs and kind of a bra top, halter sort of top, and then the other, I don't even yeah, know how to really describe Yeah, you really can't play paintball with that outfit. Well, that, isn't, that, isn't that again then a misrepresentation? Cause Cause I think, it, it would sting, I would think. Well, that's, so why would you use photos that were that non-representative other than to just try t for the... For for shall what do we say in the business salacious purposes to drag you look to drag one hundred percent to drag people in, um, it just seems as a bit inappropriate to me. Well, I would say this, Dan, hmm. um, that it, there are different ways to market uh, things in this <laughs> world, and yeah. I would just say that's a tried and true one. Well, yeah, you're you're probably right about that. I I guess I'm having some difficulty with your premise. You really you think maybe your ratings will go up if you wore a bikini? <laughs> no, I actually think they might go down. I don't think anybody wants to see me in a. You mean a two piece? Yeah, I probably two put piece? a lot of people off the dinner yeah. with that I, comment. I I, I don't I don't think they want to see you or me in a in a any form of bathing suit. But I am a little concerned beyond that of the suggestion that. A women could find their dream dude in this scenario. I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit, admit to you, I'm skeptical on that. Well, Dan, you know, have you ever had a speed dating? Mm -hmm. You only get like twelve seconds of somebody asking like two questions. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this is a better option. This you, you can shoot somebody and then have <laughs> dinner with them. And the good news is, you get to pick out which one you want. Yeah. If you want to go for one of the less athletic guys, that's yeah. probably easier to hit. Right. So, you know, if that's what you want, that's okay. It's your choice, ladies. You know, it's up to you. Do you have any women that have actually signed up for this nonsense yet? Uh, Dan, we are almost sold out. Oh, come we on. Are, we have You're sold out of men who want to be hunted. That's what you sold out no, we of. Got, we got, that's much closer. I think that we are under, like a handful, under a handful of that. 
opportunities because it's only the first 30 people. We had people signed up at the karaoke event. And how many of them are women? people enough liquor at an event, they'll sign up for the next one. And how many of the 30 are women? No, there's 26 guys, oh, 20, I think. And four and I think wo- we're, I think we're near, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Where are we at now? Two. With, no, with women. Three. Oh, okay. Two. We're at, currently at 19, Dan. 19? Oh, that shocks me. Yeah. I don't know if I believe that. So I have room for 11 more. So, now, if this works out, we may do two of these events. The Sadie Hawkins paintball extravaganza. Paintball extravaganza. Don't, come on, tell me you don't think that's like a lot of fun, Dan. So you go off in the woods and you play paintball, you drink some beer. You know, um, who doesn't like paintball? It's like hunting, but nobody dies. Bang, bang, date, date. That's that was Randy's thing. He thought that was a clever. It's not that clever. It's a little bit. I mean, kind of, kind of, kind of gross, isn't it? Well, bang, bang, date, date. Again, we Randy's slug fi- wine, not mine. I my my uh, my word was an extravaganza. Which I don't think is offensive in any manner. Whoever you hit with your paintball, uh, you will get the exclusive dinner hosted by a major celebrity, TBA. To be decided. What a tremendous opportunity to hunt down the man of your dreams. We have plenty of paintballs if you're a, a bad shot or inebriated. Uh, yeah, don't worry. Drink as much as you want. You'll hit somebody eventually. <laughs> also, I figure if, you, if the guy's been out in the woods for like half an hour. Yeah. And no one's chasing him down. He'll eventually just come in. You can shoot him point blank. <laughs> Sad, but probably true. You, you might be right. Um, I don't tell me you don't think this is genius. I, man. I, I, I'm worried about it. I got a, I got a bad feeling about it. Uh, can people we do- like people like to meet other people, Dan? I well, know you don't, but no, other I don't. People, You're right. People I like actually to meet don't. other yeah. people. I'm just saying. I, I feel again. You're misrepresenting what the individuals are going to be there. You tend to use photos of extremely attractive, sexy, um, cleavage-dominated women. And I'm saying, I'm guessing that the women who actually sign up might not be like the ones in the photo. Any more than the men. What are you saying? Yeah, were you making some sort of judgment? Yes, I am. I'm making a generalization. I just, I think it's unlikely. I think you're misleading you think the, 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 that the men. Somehow would make the event worse. Yeah, not worse, just you're diff- saying, no so different. You're saying that people need to look a certain way before you can have fun. Well, I'm no. I'm saying the opposite. Actually, you're pr- making it seem as if they have to look a certain way because every photo you have is of a perfectly sculpted woman. I don't see, or, and, and well, if you had, you don't have any shots of men. I, I, I can't make the comparison because men are never, you never offer those photographs. So is it, I, I mean, I could put if I wanted to. It sounds like you're saying only perfectly, you know, built to use an expression of the day, uh, women will be attending. I didn't say that. There's no way it doesn't actually say that. No, but it shows it. Dan, honestly, do you think everybody, like, on TV, that's how people are? No, I mean, that's I'm, the point. Well, Dan, I'm not, I'm not in charge of who gets on TV and who doesn't. I'm not, I'm not it's not my job to, to define what, you know, what's good looking in this world. Um, 612 guy writes, I mentioned in your headline, if you click on this page, bang, bang, date, date. Shouldn't it be date, date, bang, bang? Well, if you're lucky. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, people want to meet other people, Dan. I know they do. I just think you're. I think I've hit a major home run with this enterprise. And there's no, well, there's no question about that. People are needy. They're in many cases desperate. I just feel bad when the rude awakening hits them that. Hey, where are the women who look like the the women in the photo, and they don't? It shouldn't be just about how they look, but you're seemingly encouraging. It's only about how they look, not. I think everybody should try to look their best, Dan. You do? Yeah, try to look your best. Okay. 
Um, hold on a second here. Uh, so people brought to my attention. By the way, if you want to see the pictures that Dan's talking about, go to BackofBandConnections.com. <sighs> um, where, what else do we have? I, I didn't I didn't scroll down enough. I honestly it what an embarrassment. What's that? Well some of the I mean the photos down below Look, are even pick more what suggestive. Kind of dinner you want, you get you yeah. can get whatever kind of dinner you want. Yeah, I see that, yeah. It's, and if you now, want extra portion, we'll we'll work that out. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Do any of the women who are posing on these pages? For the Sadie Hawkins paintball game, bang bang date date. Will any of them? Will any of them actually be there? Oh, I don't know, Dan. I don't, I don't have particulars as to the exact list. That's a I no. Mean, Randy's kind of in charge. Of, I don't really know. And then, to be honest, there's a lot of them, those guys. I don't even know their names. You know, you, you hire agencies for this game. Would you consider as your next? Big game or your next big enterprise related to this thing? Because I know you're always looking for the next thing. A uh, a Sadie Hawkins bingo. Bingo. Yeah. Some sort of a bingo, bingo. game where you're where where the men and women are brought together. Bingo. It's an idea. That sounds like that sound like fun to you, Dan. It doesn't sound bad. To, well, it depends on who I'm with. Who I'm, who I'm like matched up with? That could be a great bingo game. Who's to say? Well, Dan, maybe you should come up with uh, bump it to bump it connections dot com. I don't think you know, we're gonna and, do that. I and then you can have a nice bingo game. Okay, you think you're onto something special here, don't you? Look, Dan, we're doing pretty good. I'm just saying that we can't process everybody as like we should. Okay. I'll take your word for it. But that's somebody else's uh, issue, isn't it? What is that supposed to mean? What's that? Sounds like a little division in the ranks there. Well, I mean, look, not everybody is uh, is as uh, dedicated so to that job as, let's say, you and I are. You're saying Randy is not committed to the bit? We've yet to find anything Randy is really committed to. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm guessing he'd like to link up with some of these chicks on these pages. Huh? I, I'm, I'm sure he would. Am I wrong? As Kessler, as no, Pat Kessler would say, wrong, am I wrong? No, you are not. He's at every one of these photo shoots, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I bet she is. I don't doubt that. Uh, can we get to the picks, too? I, I, Let's I, do it, Dan. God bless you. I'm ready it's, to go. I have, a, I have a lock of the week and everything. Sadie Hawkins paint, uh, 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 paintball. It's just, it's. I can't wait. Packerfanconnections.com for details. It's not sexist that way. That way the women are in charge. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're in charge, all right. Um, do you want to do the? Do you want to do the lock of the week first? Is it related to any of the three games? Uh, to you, it's, no, it's not really. All right, let's do that first. Let's do the Gerby lock of the week. And remember, that's the hashtag Gerby lock of the week. You give it with what Gerby's lock is with the hashtag Gerby lock of the week. You are automatically entered into a um, a lottery, so to speak, in which one lucky winner will get a pair of tickets to see the Vikings host the Indianapolis Colts. That is this Sunday night. A game, of course, that can be heard right here on The Fan. It's now, Carl Gerbschmidt's oh! <laughs> Lock of the Week. Ooh. That guy sounds demented. A little bit. Well, it fits, it fits the segment for sure. No question. Uh, yeah, I, I can't confirm or deny that if you say something mean about me in your tweet, that that somehow gets thrown away. I can't say that. So, What's that supposed to mean? Uh I don't know. Some people choose to use that uh, those tweets as insults. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. When in reality, you just remember the, the, the lock of the week. By the way, so far this year, 3 and 0 on the locks of the week. This one a little tougher, not so crazy about it. I almost went Cincinnati minus the points. But a seven and a half points is probably too much, so I didn't do it. I think the game that I like best in terms of the over-under is Chargers and Browns because they're both pretty pathetic. So we'll take the Chargers and the Browns under 42 and a half. Browns got a new quarterback. Chargers and Browns they, under 42 and a half. They got a new quarterback. You look yeah, pretty good last week. The reason why it's gonna, the game is going to be under 42 mm. and a half. That's your lock. That's the hashtag Gerby. That's the lock of the week. Lock of the Gerby week. Gerby lock of the week. I don't think you're disqualified if you throw in a cheap shot. 
I know you want to encourage that notion, but I don't I think that's the case. I'm tired of people taking cheap shots at me on, on the Twitter. Yeah. Okay. I'll take your word for it. Um, all right. Where, what do we do last week? Well, Gerby finished. Uh, Gerby and Garzi are both 2-1. Right, and one. I'm still losing. And I was 3-0. and oh, uh, So now Gerby is at 11-13. and 13. I'm at 13-11. and 11. Garzi still in first at 17-7. and seven. Let's start with uh, your. Uh, let's start with Broncos Ravens. Broncos in Baltimore. Broncos are they a surprise story? I mean, their defense uh, apparently is pretty legit. A lot of points. Baltimore is favored by nine and a half points. Carl, is that too many points? Uh, sometimes uh, it's when you play a team, and Denver has just kind of a, this. It's a weird thing. They they play teams uh, at times when their opponents don't care as much for some reason. So. I, but this week, I think the Ravens care. I think the Ravens cover the nine and a half. I agree. I'll take the Ravens to. Co- I don't believe in Denver. I know their defense has been legitimately good. I don't b- believe this nonsense. They figured out their quarterback situation. I think they will be exposed this week on the road. Didn't Baltimore lose last week too? Are you okay, Carl? What are you distracted or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm, uh, someone just dropped something in front of me. Uh, That's I great. That's just that. great. I'll take Ravens to cover. Uh, Blakemore, the birthday birthday boy, is doing the guardsy picks today. Is, what do we have? Senior producer Brett Blakemore? His birthday mm-hmm. today. How old do you think he is? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, senior producer Brett Blakemore. Happy birthday to you. Go back. Uh, Thank you, Gary. That's getting replayed at some point. Yeah, it's very well done. Um, I I like, I think it's fascinating. These are both five and three teams, yet. <laughs> the Ravens are favored by nine and a half points. I like the Broncos to get a garbage time touchdown just to, to, make to it get in. into that spread. Okay, it's so, a lot yeah, of points. I'll go Broncos. You'll go Broncos. Uh, your Packers we club. Call that a backdoor cover. Correct. Backer Packers are at home hosting the Detroit Lions. The Lions are favored uh, by two and a half points. I don't even know why I bother with Gerby, but I'll. I'll uh, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, I, I'm not crazy about this timing of this game. I think it would be better if it was played at a different time and a different day and a different week. Because it's like Detroit is like they're kind of on fire right yeah. now. And, they're feeling, and I think this is where that sick old Dan Campbell is going to try to run it up. Now he's going to have to bring it to do that. But I worry that if we fall behind that they'll start going for it on fourth down. And you, I'm not First of all, I'm going to take the Packers in the two and a half points. Okay, I'm going to do that. You don't sound very I'm, convicted I, on I it. I admit to being nervous. That's shocking. That's a shocking confession from you. Man. I admit. I told you everybody at the beginning of the season that yeah. Detroit and, and Green Bay were the best two teams, and we're going to fight it out for the division. And um, we're banged up. Jordan is kind of banged up right now. Lions will win by a touchdown. I don't even think this is easy. I don't necessarily expect a route, but they will win. Um, birthday boy, what do you think? Yeah, I, I kind of echo Gerby. It's the two and a half points. It's just begging for me to... It is. Because the Lions, if they win by a field goal, of course. Um, but a home dog, I usually like going with anyways. So I'll, I'll go with the pack just for just because. Sunday night football on the fan. The Vikings hosting the Colts and Minnesota is favored by 5.5 points. Carl? Well, I told you so. What do you mean? I did tell you that this is going to happen. That you, you know, when you're five and on, you thought you already won the Super Bowl, and mm-hmm. that's why I kept asking, "Have you had your parade yet?" Because I think you were going to need to. That the reality will start to come true, and you you would immediately lose two games in five days, and you did. And I don't think they were very pretty games. Um, and the Lions I game was a very entertaining it's game. Bad news for you that Joe Flacco is playing. I don't I disagree with that. Yep. Because because he can actually do what the last two quarterbacks did to you, mm-hmm. and and he he can figure out Brian Flores' super complicated defense is so impossible to solve, and he's such a genius. But but Joe Flacco will. So yeah, Colts will probably win the game. So I, I will take the Colts in that point. Colts are not going to win the game. I do think they're going to cover. I, I think it's a three. I think it's a field goal kind of a game. I do believe that having the veteran quarterback start instead of the kid, that's the difference. If 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 it, if it was him, I would take the Vikings with the five and a half. 
it's going to be a close ball game. It's going to be a struggle at times. But um, and I think ultimately the Vikings will win. But they are going to end up winning. Maybe even the the kid field goal kicker has been tremendous. He might even have to hit one late to win the game by 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 three points or maybe less. Maybe win the game by two. So I'll take the Vikings to win, but the Colts to cover. I I understand it was Richardson playing, but when they play against the Pack, they were just terrible. And the Vikings have a week and a half to prepare extra prep time. I like KOC with more time to get ready. I'll go with the Vikings covering that five and a half. Uh, Carl, uh, anything, any closing words before we wrap things up? Uh, no, everything is great. Um, I do need to talk about getting a couple different shades of paint for paintball. Uh, That's not our but I, You can't help me. I'll talk to you later. Go hey, by the way, you still there? Oh, he's gone. I had one other question for him. Uh, trail ref guy had an interesting question. When they call 069 on bingo night, does Randy laugh and chuckle? But maybe we'll ask him uh, next time around. Prediction segment in the rearview mirror. Uh, let's get serious. Ben Gessling is next. <laughs> What do you got for Ben Gessling? Hit the Bradshaw and Brian Cafe and text line 64686. Questions, um, observations, concerns as the Vikings uh, get back on the field on Sunday night hosting the Indianapolis Colts. Gessling joins us via the Connecticut Water Systems Hotline and brought to you by our good friends at Standard Heating and air conditioning. Your pick is in, I believe it's online already. I want to yeah. say, did you call it a three-point game or four? What was the uh, final score you, you used, went with? I think I picked the Vikings by six. Oh, was it by six? Okay. Um, yeah. So if if indeed the Colts had chosen to, to stick with the kid, Richardson, rather than Methuselah, the old-timer, would you have said about the same, or do you think it would have been... T- are you buying that that quarterback change um, vastly improves the chances that the Colts can steal this game, or not? So, or you think that's overrated? I do think it makes it tighter. I mean, I think the Colts' offense has been more efficient with Flacco in there than Richardson. I just think, you know, Richardson does things that fill up highlight films, but there have been just too many days where, I mean, his completion percentage, I think, is about 50% for the year, and he's just not able to run the offense all that efficiently with what they're asking him to do. So I think Flacco has been better at, I mean, he's, he's got a quick release time, so he beats pressure that way. He still has, I mean, he's always had a huge arm. Kevin O'Connell talked about this today, and they were in the same combine, actually, believe it or not. And he said when they were on the field throwing together, Flacco was the guy that he said, uh, this guy makes me look bad by how far he pushes it. And they've got Alec Pierce, their speedster, I think is averaging like 24 yards a catch. So they have ways to get it downfield and ways to beat you underneath. And he's kind of been able to do both of those things. So I do think it makes it more difficult. The fact that Jonathan Taylor is healthy, too, is also a big piece of it. I still think the Vikings win the game like I picked. But it is more difficult when you have a quarterback that's seen it all that I think just runs the offense more efficiently, knows how to check in and out of things. I, I think there's a lot to be said for that in this particular matchup. Well, it's funny because I've gotten uh, a good text as you were speaking coming in saying, um, <laughs> this is from 763 guy, what's with all the Flacco fright I'm hearing on KFAN? Wasn't 2017 or 18 his last year as a starter? And there is a fine line here because I, like you, felt uh, from the beginning that – Flacco does, given that he can do some of the things that the last two quarterbacks can do, that he does give the Colts a little bit better chance, maybe a much better chance. Um, By the other hand, maybe we're all kind of like too wowed by Flacco because uh, he's not, it's not like um, this is him in his prime. It's not like this is a first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback, at least at this point in his career. And maybe part of our, our, my overreaction is. Just what I saw from him, you know, last season, and frankly, even in the in a short stretch this season, he's he's certainly, I think, a bigger challenge, but not necessarily a guy that you cower and and curl up in the fetal position and say you can't beat him. I mean, let's be honest: if the Vikings can't beat Joe Flacco and figure some things out with his defense, then really, where are they as a football team? 
Yeah, I think all of that is right. I mean, this is not, you know, Tom Brady in the prime of his career or anything like that. But at the same time, he has put up some awfully good numbers both this year, and he was the guy last year that kind of got the Browns back on the winning track. And I think people even thought, hey, why didn't the Vikings pounce on him when they were in their own you know, moment of quarterback need? So I do think he has been more efficient. He's been more effective over the last year or so than we might expect from a guy that, you know, has had the up and downs. I mean, the old the old discussion of is Joe Flacco an elite quarterback was always the thing we used to have fun with back in the day. And, and he seemed like he was kind of hitting the end of his stride a few years ago. But he has played well enough that I do think it's somebody you have to be at least aware of enough to think this could be a little more of a challenge because – he has run that offense efficiently. I think they've gotten a lot of things that work with what he is at this point in his career. And, you know, the, the Vikings have not been world beaters offensively lately to the point where you can assume they're going to put up 40 points. I think they'll be better with Hawkinson in there. But if the game is close and having a veteran quarterback in this game, I do think it's enough to be at least aware of, not maybe yeah, frightened right. by it, but uh, aware of it, certainly. Well, I think part of it is the vulnerability the defense has shown the last couple of games, right? I think if it had not shown, because yeah. we have seen, you know, there's ebb and flow with every team, offense and defense, over the course of a season. But, you know, when you when you factor in the number of sustained long drives, right? It's not like the Vikings yeah. have been turning the ball over three times a game. The, the, you know, the last two teams are driving routinely 70, 75, 80 yards. And so I think that's what makes me then maybe, you know, give too much credit to the old time quarterback just because we've seen two other guys who are, you know, quick, like he is supposed to be a, at what? Getting rid of the ball pretty fast, correct? Yeah. 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 And I think the, the, the thing in that Rams game, I think every one of their drives, was the same. It was get the ball on a kickoff that went into the end zone for a touchback, drive 70 yards for a touchdown. And when you're giving those up four times a game, that's a problem. Now, the Vikings would counter with, well, in that game, we gave them three first downs on penalties that gave them a new set of downs on a third down. So they were a play from getting off the field. And some of that, they would say, this is stuff we did to ourselves as much as anything anybody did to us. So you factor that in, I think the loss of Blake Cashman has hurt, like we've talked about. I think that is a, a concern again for Sunday night. But, yes, in the overall picture of things, there have been other factors that have led yeah. to some of those drives. But at the same time, when you're giving that up as consistently as they have, that does become a problem because it makes it also – so you have the other thing that Kevin O'Connell has talked about a lot, where they're only running 50 offensive plays a game. You're not getting Justin Jefferson as involved as you'd like. You're not able to use your running game to kind of affect the overall contour of what's happening. It has just been, I think it's had an effect on more than just the defensive phase of things that they've given up a lot of these long drives. So whatever they need to do to get that cleaned up, they certainly need to do it soon. Um, If you're a Kevin Faulness or hockey fan, don't panic. At the top of the hour, Russo Radio will join us from the X. Plenty of time to talk hockey. Lavelle will talk about his manscaping experiences at 5.30. Um, it's oh, up God. to you whether you want to get back into that subject. Uh, but it's Ben <laughs> Gessling with more football talk now. A couple of texts I want to get your reaction to, including one from Richie out of Lake Elmo. Ben, what happened to the defense where everybody at the line was standing, confusing QBs as to who would go where? Starting with the Lions game, they were all in a three-point stance so the QB could easily read the defense. What changed? That's from 702 guy. Um I don't know if I agree that that's what I've seen. It, is he right? Are we are we showing different stuff, or is this is simply a, a fact, a matter of the offenses have done a better job of adjusting to it, in large measure by max protecting, and by you know even um, occasionally using receivers in motion to help protect and yeah. getting rid of the ball quickly. Uh, what what are we seeing that has uh, is changing? Do you agree with seven hundred two guy, or is he making it up? Well, I'd have to go back and look at all of the snaps to see kind of the breakdown of three-point stances versus two-point stances and how much that has changed from early in the season. I do think what you hit on there is is part of it. The max protection stuff, we've seen more of that. The, the Lions showed this a couple of weeks ago where they motion a receiver over and they're blocking the backside off some of those things. And then maybe a, a uh, somebody who's in coverage is keying off of that and then gets kind of sucked into a different assignment because of that as well. 
I think they have done a good job of put down on some things for the vice as much, although that can kind of cut both ways because then offenses can't change as much either. But it's been quick passes. It's been max protect stuff. It's been some different things with receivers coming in like we're talking about. I, I think there have been a lot of attempts to say this is a defense that beats people from front to back. They beat people by their pass rush more so than just with the coverage. And if you can account for that pass rush, you buy yourself a little bit of time to test this secondary in coverage. I think that's been a lot of what we've seen. I think it's what we'll continue to see. I think like Cashman being out, we keep coming back to Cashman and it probably almost to a degree that makes him sound like Dick Buckus or something. But a lot of the deception they try to run is helped by Cashman being there because you can't tell if it's Cashman or Pace coming. I think the looks look a little more symmetrical that way. So there's all of those components to it that I think they've had to figure out a way around. And just the more teams play them, the more they are starting to see, okay, this is what they typically run. Let's come up with some answers for it. So all of this kind of becomes part of the puzzle, and it's what they have to figure out as they try to adjust to some of the adjustments they've seen teams make to them. All right, I got several more items I want to get to, but uh, let's get a quick pause in now. Ben Gessling, brought to you by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, is joining us. Russo Radio, top of the hour, as I mentioned in Lavelle, but more football conversation coming up. Time now for the Vikings Report on The Fan, presented by Miller Lite. Viking safety Cam Bynum joins Barrero next, after this, from Miller Lite. Stick around following every noon Vikings game this season for Vikings Overtime, hosted by Meat Sauce, presented by Park Chrysler Jeep in Burnsville. Catch them all right here on KFAN on the free iHeartRadio app. Standard Heating and Air Conditioning brings Ben Gessling to each and every one of you every Friday. And uh, Gessling joins us once again for part two via the Connecticut Water Systems Hotline. How is it going to work at left tackle? Are we talking rotation, or do you think the new guy is going to be there from the start? Well, I am curious about that because Kevin O'Connell was kind of cagey about it today, and I tried to press him on it a little bit, and he was not willing to go there. So I wonder if it's either going to be a rotation or if it is going to be something that has a couple of moves attached to it. If, if it's Cam Roberts, Cam Robinson at left tackle, and then possibly, I wonder if that'll have a contingency with Dalton Reisner here too, if he ends up maybe starting at right guard or coming in at right guard for Ed Ingram. I think that's a possibility as well. I mean, they have to make a move, they'd have to make that move by tomorrow to take him off of injured reserve and get him active for that game. But I wonder if there are a few pieces to this whole thing. I mean, O'Connell was very complimentary of what Robinson did, and I don't think there's any secret that they would plan for him to be the left tackle when they feel good about it. He should be healthy after coming back from concussion in Jacksonville. It's just a question of has he picked up enough of the offense. I would bet that we will see him in some capacity Sunday night. I, I think the way the head coach was Talking about that today, I, I expect we'll see him somehow or another. Uh, emailer Don, or texter Don, I keep hearing that the older veteran Vikings defensive secondary cannot cover man-to-man. Therefore, they're forced to play zone and be at the mercy of whether they can apply some early pressure on the opposing quarterback, therefore exposing zones that are then wide open. Do you agree, Don asks, with that assessment? Well, they did talk a lot in the preseason about wanting to play more man coverage, and I think they were going to see that as a, a component of it. I don't know if it was going to go completely to that. But, yes, that is the question, I think, that I've had with why they haven't done more of it. Because, I mean, this was the thing with Patrick Peterson a few years ago, too, where he'd been a man corner most of his career and had done it really, really well. And part of the reason he came to Minnesota was, I want to play man coverage. I want to get back to being – a press corner that runs all over the field, but then he realized the zone stuff was better for him at this point in his career because it didn't require him to run across the field quite as much as it would have been otherwise. So I do wonder if there's some of that with Gilmore and maybe to a degree with Griffin and and Murphy. It's just saying, because what what you're going to get if teams do that is say, all right, let's see if you can run with our guy on deep crossers, you know, however many times you have to do that and keep coming back from it. So I, I do wonder if that is part of their strategy there is saying let's not put these corners in that capacity because they've asked these guys to play a lot of snaps. They don't have a ton of depth at that position, and you really need these three to be healthy because I'm not sure that there's anybody behind them that has earned the trust of 
this coaching staff, at least in a way that you'd want to be counting on them for large stretches of the season. We talked much earlier in the show about a couple comments, I think first um, generated by by J.J., and then because of some things he said about the offense, then you guys went back to uh, KOC for an explanation. And I referred to it as the dumbing down of the offense. That's not the way Jefferson said it. And, of course, that's a little bit, you know, uh, that's a little raw or snarkier than they would say it. But I do sense in the O'Connell extended answer that there does seem to be this week more of an emphasis on um, maybe not putting quite as much on Darnold's plate so that we're get, we get back to more execution and a little less of you got to do this, this, and this pre-snap. What did you make of those comments? Yeah, I, I think that's. I think your take on it is right there. I, I think one of the things that stuck out to me, I, I sat down with O'Connell a couple of weeks ago for a story on how he's changed as a play caller, yep, kind of going into that Rams game. Good piece. And one of the yeah, thank you. One of the things he talked about in that, I asked him how he's evolved, and the first thing he said is, I'm not chasing plays as much as I used to. He said there's a lot of times where you draw something up and you think there's no way that this won't work. Like you you put it on a whiteboard and you say, oh, this is going to be awesome. I love it. Let's go run it. And then you say when it comes into reality, okay, it's not quite that clean. So some of it has been that. I think some of it is saying – if you're putting as much complicated stuff in there, are you getting to the line as as soon as they want? I mean, that's been an issue, trying to get out of the huddle in time to survey coverage and be able to can to different things and not have to burn timeouts. I think a lot of those things are part of it, and I think some of that is him saying, you know what, it this is different in theory than it is in practice, and what we have in practice is a quarterback who has not been in this system for three years he has not played in a version of this system his entire career like Kirk Cousins had we have to adapt some things so I I think what he was getting at today kind of tracked with some of the things that he said when I sat down with him a couple weeks ago I'm curious to see how that will work out and if it does lead to a smoother more seamless experience for this offense but I I do think some of that is him kind of checking his own instincts there where it's all right it doesn't really matter how great this looks when I draw it up on a grease board, it's more about how seamlessly can we execute this in a game or call it when we're trying to get out of the huddle and get everything set up in time. Hawkinson going to play a lot, do you think? I Yeah, I do. I think he has been ready to go. I think they feel good about where he's at. I would expect he comes back in in a pretty large role, and I think they, they want him to be a big part of the offense. I mean, he's really been – wide receiver too when he's healthy in terms of the guy that gets the most attention the guy that has the most concepts drawn up for him so yes i would expect he's a big factor i think that helps this offense quite a bit if he is a big factor i think it's a nice safety blanket for darnold and a guy that can run after the catch so yeah i expect they turn him loose i think he's ready to go i think they're ready to have him i I think he'll be a big part of it thank you for the intel as always Uh, enjoy sunday night we'll chat next week all right, sounds good. Thanks, Dan. That, that's Ben Gessling, brought to you by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Uh, Brett Blakemore, the birthday boy, is off the hook today. No top five at five. Why? Because we've got Russo Radio from the X. That is next here in the fan.